All right, what's going on, guys? Try back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing another Walking Dead video for today, leading up to the mid-season premiere for The Walking Dead Season 10 coming up here in a couple weeks. Uh, we just received word that the mid-season premiere has been rated for sexual content, so uh, Negan banging Alpha's brains in, not far. <laughs> How are you guys doing? So it's been a few days, so I definitely wanted to do a Walking Dead video pretty soon with you guys. Uh, we do have a couple weeks coming up here to the return for The Walking Dead Season 10. So I'm pretty excited to see it come back. And, uh, you know, I don't know, we pretty much did. I feel like we pretty much did everything. You know, we did our death predictions for this half. Uh, we've gone over the preview pictures. Uh, we've done lots of predictions videos for the back half of the season. Looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to get to see the Whisperer War eventually here, probably. And... You know, most likely, you know, some kind of resolution for that, even though it might, you know, the whispers might spill over in some way into season 11. But I'm looking to see some kind of resolution for that. And, uh, you know, part of this goes back into the um, the uh, trailer we saw for this back half of the season where there's the uh, the one of Negan where he's like leaning back and stuff. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I don't know if that's what we're going to see in the Walking Dead comic series. You do have kind of a hookup between uh, Negan and Alpha uh, temporarily. So in the TV series version, could we see something similar? Um, um, you know, I tend to kind of think so. So it says the mid-season premiere has received a content descriptor containing SVL, indicating the episode airing 20th of February 23rd, which is just our mid-season premiere, contains uh, sexual situations, violence, and uh, coarse uh, uh, or crude language. <laughs> so that's got Negan written all over it. Uh, the TV uh, MA, uh, I guess has that mature uh, MA series, is typically rated V or VL uh, and has rarely included sexual sexual content uh, requiring the sexual situations advisory. <laughs> so the Walking Dead uh, season 10 mid-season premiere squeeze is uh, so uh, named after the uh, uh, per perilous situation, that's a word, perilous situation facing Daryl, Carol, and the others, yeah, 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 in the cave after um, after Alpha's kind of trapped them in there. So I'm just wondering if Alpha's going to like heckle them when she's kind of up there after they've kind of all fallen down. She's probably going <laughs> to like, because there's the picture of them all looking up uh, at something. So I'm just wondering if uh, Alpha's going to troll them before she kind of leaves, like have fun or something. <laughs> you know? Ta-ta, and then she walks off or something of the sort like that. Like leaves them all. Maybe she'll throw them some lanterns and stuff like that just to have fun with them. Uh, I kind of feel like she's kind of the sadistic type of, uh, of a villain that would sort of, you know, she likes to kind of uh you know like um like a cat right likes to play with them play with its food before it catches it right so if we find the mouse as soon as you can kill the mouse right away oh, that's no fun you gotta kind of play with the mouse maybe let the mouse think it's gonna escape and then you get it right <laughs> so that's more fun you can't just you can't just kill them all right away otherwise it's uh it's no fun right you know then then they'll get bored and it'll be many years and the whispers won't have anything to do so you know, I kind of get that sense that Alpha's a crazy, crazy bitch like that, right? So <laughs> that's what it is. Uh, but seriously, though, on a serious note, though, do we think like we would actually probably see that in the mid-season premiere? You know, I'm thinking so. Like, I don't know why else they would have the rating. Of course, there is the uh, the Eugene uh, Rosita situation, I guess, which they're kind of they're kind of working up. I don't know if it's going to be a big deal because they kind of did that with the uh, the Ezekiel uh, Michonne. Definitely, girls are running the series now, right? <laughs> the Ezekiel uh, Michonne. Uh, uh, thing and that ended up to be nothing right so it's like you know are they gonna is it actually matter we'll see but uh, i don't know anyway it's gonna be fun man and i'm, I'm heavily looking forward to seeing that uh, that return uh for the walking dead in a couple weeks man i need it man it's, it's been a bit of a break right this is actually one of the longest uh mid-season breaks we've actually had for walking dead ever because it actually ended did it, did it end either like right at the end of November because it started early because they got premiere and that kind of stuff uh, now too, which uh, people for premiere, I think will probably get the episode Friday night or whatever. So of that week. So maybe that's February 21st. Um, you know, something something like that. So I uh, might be able to catch it a little bit early if you have options for uh, for a premiere. So you might want to look into that. Those of you guys who live in the uh, the U.S. especially, because uh, I think most uh, most providers there offer it, right? So it's an option. Uh, we do get the synopsis for Squeeze. I mean, I think we know pretty much what it's all going to be, uh, what's all going to entail. And I think that, um, you know, at, so at first we thought with Squeeze that maybe it'd be Jerry, but uh, somebody did let me know that after we had mentioned in the preview pictures that Jerry is there at the hilltop fight scene with Ezekiel, 
Peak and the others. Uh, AMC cropped the picture. <laughs> so this is like a moon landing. So this is like a NASA situation. Once someone finds something, they crop it, they change it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not supposed to be there. Change it. Oh, it's on there's all these other sites anyway. Oh, change it anyway. It, it makes it look even worse when they change it. It's like, you know, you catch something and then they crop it or they change it. And then there's all these other sites that have it already. Like it's in the video anyway <laughs> that I posted. Uh, so it's like, you know, it's it's all over the place anyway. You cropping it just makes it worse. It makes it look like, okay, yeah, Jerry's going to survive so we don't have to worry, right? So I guess maybe they never figured that people would be such a uh, uh, Walking Dead, you know, uh, uh, obsessed fans that we would actually like go through who's in the cave and who's in the scenes afterwards and find out from there who's who's there so i don't know man um it's all good stuff i mean you know i'm kind of desensitized to character deaths at this point as a lot of you guys are after all the years we have some fun doing death predictions and stuff like that anyway but it's sort of like you know you see so many characters be killed off in walking dead it's like i'm just more excited to see the season yes there's going to be some people that are going to die in the whisper of war and you know we can expect to see that but is it something to where it's like, I'm dying to find out who it's going to be? No, not really. Maybe I'm dying to find out if Michonne's going to get to survive her leave or if she's going to get like some kind of uh, comic book Andrea-esque type of death or something. Because in the comics, Andrea becomes Rick's love interest. She survives on a lot longer. And the comics are over now, so this isn't really like much of a spoiler. And then later on, something happens with uh, with a horse and a whole bunch of walkers. And so... Uh, so, you know, there's some things like that that happen. So, so some people, some sites are thinking, and I've seen them posted, uh, was Forbes one of them? One of those sites, you know, I don't know, one of the top Google sites will say that maybe Michonne will get the same demise as Andrea had in the comics with that. So we'll see which one it ends up being and everything. Uh, I hope she survives so we can see her in the movies. And there are three movies, so it makes sense that she would, but, uh, but who knows? Uh, the next episode is called, uh, yeah, episode 10 is called Stalker, <laughs> right? Uh, scripted by Jim Barnes, who wrote the first, who wrote the horror tingled ghosts earlier this season, uh, which spended off the 49 hour walker attack. See, again, the cat you know, plays with its food before it, before it catches it, right? So where an exhausted Carol suffered disturbing visions of, uh, murdered son, Henry. And there was the, uh, the back and forth with the, are they whispers? Is Carol seeing things? Nope, she's seeing things. Oh, no, wait, she's not. They were whispers. Uh, and, and Alpha did send them in after her. So, or at least they, yeah, Alpha probably sent them in. I don't think they would go in of their own accord just because they love Alpha that much. Gamma might do that, but the rest, or earlier she might have done that. The rest probably wouldn't do that. So, so then it goes into uh, the official synopsis for it reads, Our group must defend Alexandria from a threatening outside force. Whispers? I don't know. Um, so that's the uh, that's the tenth episode. But most of the battle scenes we see are at the hilltop with the whispers. Uh, you know huge herd and then you've got them they've got uh, uh, uh flaming arrows <laughs> they've got they've got arrows that are <clears throat> on fire sounds like game of thrones video. arrows that are on fire that they're shooting at um, at the uh, at the hilltop so there's there's that one uh, Savage Rictator says, Ezekiel is heading to the Commonwealth for treatment of his thyroid cancer. Eugene probably gets word they have medical equipment. Oh, man, I wish, right? Maybe you're right, too, for Savage Rictator. That's a good idea that maybe uh, Eugene could get in contact with someone at the Commonwealth. Maggie comes back. Ezekiel goes there. Maybe they have some kind of treatment they can offer him. I don't know what the chances of survival are once you have uh, thyroid cancer. You know, I don't know. Um, you'd have to kind of look into that, but, you know, I just hope overall that Ezekiel can survive, can JSS, uh, because, you know, I don't know, man, he's just a really positive, him and Jerry, they are very positive, and in The Walking Dead, you don't have too many characters like that, you know, there's Glenn, there's Ezekiel, Jerry, who else is kind of like, uh, is able to keep a positive frame of mind despite uh, hell on earth all around them, I'm not sure, man, there's, there's very few that can kind of be very, very positive, even though the world is is, uh, is ending all around them and people are killing each other and all this crazy stuff's going on. Um, so I hope you're right with that one. I like the prediction. It makes sense. And uh, yeah, I hope we'll see that. Because it's true also that if, if Ezekiel just dies from the cancer, you know, how is that surprising? Like they let us know way ahead of time. It's sad and everything. And if you just see that happen through, it's like, you know, you almost expect a twist that, no, he will survive, and then he'll survive on way longer, and that would be really cool, because they need, they, need, they need some people like that uh, for the next few years, if it's going to get to season 12 or 13. You need, you need uh, Ezekiel, you need maybe Jerry, you need, you know, you, I don't know, you need some people there, Aaron, you need some. They can't all leave, otherwise it's like, well, then you might as well end the show, right? Rick Grimes says, uh, did you hear about McFarlane Toys losing the Walking Dead license? 
and no more figures or anything released. What are your thoughts on that, Trev? So thoughts on basically no more Walking Dead toys, uh, pretty much. Um, or figures, for the most part. You know, the comics uh, ended, obviously, so there's no new releases for comics. Um, you know, so the TV ser- we have the TV series to go on. Um, but the McFarlane figures, you know, I'm not a huge fan of... Some of the McFarlane stuff is cool, but a lot of times they release, like, the same character in all these different scales. They do that, uh, meaning, like, you know, this version of Negan, that version of Negan, this version of Negan, this version of Negan. And it's like, you know, how many versions do you need? Give me one good one that doesn't suck, and I'm pretty much happy with that. So that's why I collect the 3-0 stuff, um, which there's a Negan figure there for the 3-0-1-6 scale. Now, for those guys who don't understand, those are not mass market produced. You can't go to Walmart and buy those. You have to actually, like pretty much order them online or go to a, a comic shop where they've ordered it and a lot of comic shops don't so they're pretty rare to come by you kind of have to order them so those are only for like your hardcore enthusiast collectors um you know your your mr and mrs walmart that just go to the store and just see oh i like walking dead i'll buy this daryl or i'll buy this whatever those days are pretty much long gone uh even the posters i see now are stranger things posters i went to a clothing store the other day with jess and they had like stranger things shirts instead of like walking dead stuff like stranger things hoodies and stranger things shirts instead of you know back in the day those sections used to be walking dead sections like you'd see you know different walking dead shirts and stuff so you know in the future i'm expecting to see some stuff but as far as the like the collectible figures go of the smaller scale i think it's done man i don't think they're going to be doing any more of those pretty much at all um you know i wish that somebody could get the license like uh, a hasbro or or maybe a mattel or something like that where they could do like really good versions of like uh, like six or seven inch walking dead stuff and you could get like one good version for each one. Like give us like a couple good Ricks and a really good Daryl. And but you know it's pretty much it's like yeah the odds of that happening are pretty much none. It's probably done for the most part. And that's just uh, it's just what it is, man. Oh well, you know what whatever. Uh, X uh, Jammer X says uh, my take. Uh, they forgot they still have to sell the series to viewers. Uh, so with uh, with fear, uh, Alicia stepped back for Morgan. Who do you think? has a bigger audience. Uh, the So <laughs> I want to compare. J. Amber wants to compare uh, Alicia versus Morgan, uh, a more sizable fan base, um, you know, for, for fear. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Maybe you go equal at this point, I want to say, because Morgan came in with a lot of steam. But the thing is, is that a lot of people got tired of the whole, you know, pieces of circle thing very quickly. So I guess I put them pretty much at the same uh, level right now, uh, for the most part. Um, you know, it's it's tough to say, right, for, for fear. With the original Walking Dead series, it's pretty easy to say. Daryl is your number one, you know, right now, because Rick's gone. Rick is still probably overall your overall number one, I think. But then after that, for the TV series, Daryl, after Daryl, Carol, Michonne's going to leave. And then you get into some of the others like, you know, Maggie Negan, you know, uh, who else is still alive? Ezekiel, Aaron, you know, you know, those, just the ones that are still alive. For fear, uh, yeah, you know, it's 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 harder to kind of say, but it's probably something like that. You know, Morgan, uh, Alicia, who else out of that strand? Daniel, um, man, I, I don't know for the others. Uh, I'd say you know something something like that. Dwight would be up there too. He'd be near, you know, close to the top. But it's funny when you compare because it's almost like it almost feels like fear has more sort of you know, uh, forefront characters now because The Walking Dead has lost so many. Only The Walking Dead has like a, has, has Daryl, who, who is bigger than anyone is in fear, I want to say still. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and some of the others too. So, uh, Mastro versus L uh, Universe says, is he selling it so he can travel to the ice wall edge of the flat earth? So with the, uh, the Marvel Legends sale video, uh, flat earthers. So I somehow gained some flat earth subscribers. I don't know how that happened. Uh, you know, it just, it just happened. I did a couple of walking demos in space. We did some flat earth videos. Next thing you know, there's, uh, there's Flat Earth subscribers, so I don't know. So uh, it's still fun. There's a site you can check out, flatearthfacts.com, which is kind of cool. It's still heavily, you know, some of it's heavily argued, heavily bashed down and everything like that and, and ridiculed like crazy. So uh, just be weary of what you're getting into if you get into researching that, uh, which it's not a joke, honestly. It's not a joke. At first, it sounds like a joke. You get into it, you see like, yeah, it's pretty hard to find curvature if you actually start to look yourself. Uh, and, and other amateurs that look too, it's kind of hard. So 
it's 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 a fun thing. You can look into it if you want to. If you're highly disagreeable, though, if you're highly agreeable, don't bother because you're you're just gonna say like, oh, it's you know, you're gonna ridicule it. That's what it is. If you're somewhat disagreeable, you can look into it and see what you think. But I just think it's funny that there's even some people that are there for that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how that made its way into a Marvel Legends video. Flat Earth is everywhere, right? So. Uh, you know, shipping would cost more on a globe. No, no, no. <laughs> Michael Farron says, uh, you know, Trev, uh, really wondering if you prefer uh, the Andrea Rick relationship in the comics or the Rick Michonne relationship in the TV series. Um, which one do you think they did a better job with? Oh, man, that's really. Oh, which one was better? The Andrea Rick relationship in the comic version or the uh, Rick and Michonne relationship in the TV series? Uh, well, the thing about the Rick Michonne relationship in the TV series is I felt like it was very, it was cut short because you have the stuff with Carl in season eight. So he got all the attention with Carl dying. You know, Rick's going to focus on Carl. Um, season nine was Rick, Rick leaving. So, and then when did they start going together? It was like season, when was it? Like, oh, I want to say it was like season six, season seven, when it became, when, when did it like become a thing? somewhere around there right so it's like you know i'd almost want to say maybe i prefer you know i like to see the actors actresses portray it out in the tv series a lot of times I like the tv series versions better but in this case it was cut so prematurely short but there is rj too so that's another thing that's that's an advantage for the tv series version that the comics never had they never had that in the comic version because carl was still alive and everything they didn't do that and so Man, there's like, like in some ways I prefer the comic version with Andrea and Rick because you got to see Rick react to losing Andrea. And so he, for those of you guys who haven't read it, he loses Andrea and Andrea never slept with the governor. She never slept with Shane. She was clean. <laughs> okay. So, so you have to work. If you haven't read the comics, you gotta, you gotta work on this a little bit. You gotta see it as, okay, she wasn't with him. She wasn't with him. She just was, was good. And then she was with Dale for a little while. But then, you know, Dale dies and then she goes with Rick eventually and then it's good. And she's really strong and everything and she doesn't, she's not killed off like she was in the TV series version at that time. So she survives on further. She's like a sniper. She's really badass, everything like that. And then when he loses her, he goes each night and he goes out and he sleeps on her grave on top of her grave. So there's some, there's some stuff like that that I think is really, really cool. And uh, that we, you know, we'll never see that adapted in the TV series version, most likely. Maybe in the movies somehow. I don't, I don't know how you could work that into the movies. But so there's things I like about them both. It's hard to compare, Michael, because it's like, you know, but RJ in the TV series is cool, too. And, and Denai Greer is super badass as Michonne. And to see her with Rick is great, too. And I did I did like their chemistry going back into Clear and, and, and those kind of episodes where they, uh, they, you know, eventually got together. So it's... Um, you know, I don't know, man. Take your pick. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your comments below. Do you prefer, if you've read the comics, do you prefer the TV series relationship for Rick with Michonne? Or do you prefer the comic version of uh, Rick with Andrea and getting to see his 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 uh, his reaction to losing her and, you know, how impactful that was, how sad that was? Because that's one of the saddest, I want to say that's one of the saddest deaths in all The Walking Dead. And it's one that in the TV series, it'll only be you know, the same if Michonne dies in some way and then, but he's not there to react to it. So it's, it's like she'd have to die in the movies and then he'd have to somehow re respond to it afterwards to sync it up to be a comparison. So it's not a fair comparison because the TV series is everyone leaving and that kind of thing. Uh, there's pros and cons to both, but I guess if I had to pick one, maybe I'll go with uh, the Andrea Rick in the comics because we got to see that all the way through and it wasn't cut so prematurely short. Anyway, that's it for the video today, guys. I'll see you back again soon. If you liked it, please thumb it up below. You can share, you can favorite, you can subscribe at the bottom left. That's it for this one. See you guys again soon for another. As always, this is Trev, and I'm saying peace later, guys. See you soon.